guys, we are working on week 5. This is CS50. We are working on inheritance this week. Good news is there's a lot of code that's provided to you this week and actually our to-dos aren't as complicated as they've been in the past. This is because this week's lecture went over a lot of the things that we need here and then the notes give us a lot of things too. We are going to be using malloc which is memory allocation. We're going to be using the free function right here which is a very simple function as well and luckily we're going to be repeating these pretty often so it should be a pretty simple code. Let's get into it. This is the code you're provided with here. There are a few to-dos. We have all of the code up here that you should be looking at, you should be understanding. We're defining a structure here called person. That's going to be important. We're defining generations and indent length. We're creating a family, printing a family, freeing a family, and we have random LL. Now a lot of these that have already been created are going to be used in our code as we go forward. So once you've read through this and you've gone through the lecture, a lot of this should start to be making sense for you as a coder. So you should be able to read some of these things here and have a greater understanding of what they do at this point, which is kind of what's great about week five. You really start to get a grasp of what these things are doing. Now, if that hasn't come for you yet, don't worry. It's okay to keep struggling through these things because if that is the case for you, you want to make it through these things and make it through the course to make sure that you're keeping up because you can always go back and look at the code that you have and understanding better once you've completed it and completed the course. If you guys are struggling or have any questions, we do have a Discord that's in my bio. You guys are welcome to join. We've got some great people in there that are willing to help out with what they know, as well as I'm available in there. You guys can message me directly. As always, like and comment, absolutely free for you to do. Let's get into this one. So scrolling down to our first to do, we have allocate memory for a new person. Now as usual, I've added some of my own extra notes here in parentheses to make sure I'm aware of what we're going over here. So the first thing that we're going to do is add a new person, we're going to allocate memory, we're going to store the person, and we're actually going to use something from the lecture that was called size of. So hopefully you guys were paying attention to that. The first thing we're going to do here is we're going to allocate the memory that we need. So line 30 right above gives us person P, right, star or asterisk P. And we need to allocate some memory, which we use malloc. And in the lecture, they spoke a couple times about size of and how it dynamically allocates memory. So that's what we're going to be using here. It is in the lecture. If you don't remember that, go back to your transcripts or go back to the lecture and look that one up. And that's all we need to do to allocate the necessary memory. Then we have if there are still generations left to come, so if generations is greater than one, create two new parents for the current person by recursively calling the family tree. Now recursion is really, really important too. They do go over that as well in the lecture. So again, rewatch it or go over the transcripts, right? You can control F in the transcripts and you can read what David Malin was talking about. The transcripts that are found in your weekly courses are a good way to look up specific things like recursion. You can control F, type in recursion, and you'll find all the times that he talked about it and you can reread those. So using the transcripts is just as effective as using the lecture itself. So those will all be really good here. So our next to do is set parent pointers to the current person. So there's two parents, so we should have two pointers parents outlined and those are in line 48 already well they were 48 they've moved down a bit now but we have them here right so from the lecture we remember that a pointer is lowercase p and an arrow right that's literally what a pointer is and we're gonna go to parents and our top one there is gonna be zero and that's gonna equal parent zero just like above and we need a second parent therefore a second pointer we're gonna use this pointer here parents one it's going to be equal to parent one next we're asked to randomly assign a current person's alleles based on the alleles of their parents so we have two pointers and we need two randoms out of two options right so let's start with the pointer so we know a pointer and we're going to do alleles zero just like above because we're going to need two of these and it's going to be equal to parent zero because we've declared that above right and we need their alleles and we're going to make it random right so to make it random we're going to do rand there's other ways to do this to me this is the simplest way so we're doing rand percent sign two and that will assign one of the two random alleles that are available so that'll keep it completely random meaning the person inherits something that's entirely random which is true in genetics anyways and we're gonna make our second pointer here alleles 
and we already used zero remember we start counting at zero in code that's a very hard concept for a lot of people to grasp pretty early early on so make sure you have a grasp of that and parent one and we're gonna to point to their LLs and we're gonna do the same thing random so R-A-N-D and percent two that is gonna give us what we need to assign two random LLs to the new current generation so let's move on here we're looking at set parent pointers to null so we need pointers and we need null the pointers are just going to be the same thing. We've already assigned the parents, so p parents, oops, zero, and we're going to set them to null. Null, all capitals on that one. We need our second pointer. And we're going to set that to null as well. And I'm going to fix that typo above that I just saw, even though I tried to retype it. And let's fix that plus sign and make it an equal sign. <laughs> let's go ahead and close both of those out. And we're going to move on to randomly assign alleles. So now we need pointers to the alleles. Again, all of this is going to be the same thing, just a little bit redundant. So it's going to be a pretty quick code today. Uh, so we need alleles 0. And we're going to set that to a random allele, right? So it needs to equal, which was declared above. We went over this, random, A-L-L-E-L. And then close that one, and we're going to set another pointer here. Alleles. Spelling is going to be important on this one, and for a word like alleles that I've never used, make sure you stay focused on that. And we're going to set that. Now again, our random allele, that was set for us, okay? So real quick, taking a look back up at that. You have that right here, okay? And then you're, we're going to be using free family as well, right? And we had person star P, right? So we already declared a lot of these up top. If you don't read what's going on and what's been provided for you, you won't be assigning the right things to your code, and your code might not work out the way it would. Now, there are ways around that if you want to redefine things or whatever you have, if you want to extend the code. But the objective of code is to get it as short as possible. So we want to use what has been provided to us. All right, so let's scroll down to our next to-do this is not actually going to be null we're going to return p and i'm going to explain why so return null they went over this in the lecture it's, it has to do with recursion right so in the create family function return null could be used as a base right so if there's some error or other logic that has gone wrong then it would return null but in this case in the way that we've written the code there's always going to be at least one person that gets created. So we're not going to return null, we're going to return p. We're going to return the person that was created. And you'll notice here on line 79, free p in all ancestors of p. So now we're going to start freeing some of those things. And that's why we're returning p, because we need something to free up. And that's why we use that particular letter. So now we're going to get into another case of recursion here, right? Again, this has gone over in the lecture. So what we're going to do is we're going to handle the base case, right? So if something is equal to null, we don't need it to go on infinitely. We need it to take no further action where we're at and go back and move back up and call stacks uh, of the previous level of recursion. So we don't want this thing to keep trying to do something infinitely. So for our base case, let's get in here. We're going to use an if loop. So if, and we're going to set p is equal to, so two equal signs. And let me fix that p real quick. Null, all caps then we are going to just return to make sure that our program doesn't continue to run infinitely. And now we need to free the parents from recursively. And this is all above. I told you we would be using some of this. So this is the free family function. So that was made for us up top. So we're just going to go ahead and free them. So we're going to use our pointers. And we've already made all of these, so it's all going to be very redundant on this code, which is really nice, but what you really want to do on this one is read it and understand it, right? I'm going to free the second parent here using the pointer. One and close that out. So freeing things as taught in the lecture is very simple. Now we just need to free the child. Now what did we name the child? That's actually very simple. We named it P. So all we're going to do is free that right there. 
and that should be it for this code. Now the rest of it's provided for you, but the best thing you can do in this code is actually go back through it and read it and understand what you're putting in here. It's a very simple code, and it's worth noting that it's simple because we're starting to get the hang of things. Yes, it was simple to code as well, and the lecture again, you can use these things here. This is where it talks about recursion, right? If you want to look up malloc so to see all the times that we talk about allocating memory, you can just control F, and these are the notes to the lecture. So you'll find these here if you go to transcripts, and that's a really good resource. Hey, I did, don't know where this was. I don't have to search minute by minute. I can actually look at the transcript of the video, and I can get that information. First, we're going to style it. Looks good. No problems there. Let's see if it makes. See, there's exactly what I was talking about. We have a misspelling. That's line 57. So let's go up there and spell that right real quick. And that's ES, and we know that that one's going to be ES below it. Let's try it again. Line 70, I'm having the same issues. Again, this word was kind of new to me, so it's not a word I use in my daily language. It's going to be something that occasionally presents a problem. So let's make it one more time. Inheritance makes. All right, let's run our check on it real quick. And there you have it, guys. Everything works out. This is CS50. That was Inheritance. I am Devin. As always, you guys are awesome. Keep up the good work. Please like. If you have any questions, comment, or join the Discord, definitely subscribe. All that helps me out. We'll see you guys soon.